it was decided that charter members would be those joining the fellowship prior to the dedication of the church. PBCC had 44 charter members. In January of 1975, Dr. Eddie Adams, one of the Bible class speakers, became the first pastor of the church. In April of 1975, the building site was obtained on the Robinson Cemetery property from the heirs of Aubrey Hugh Robinson, Ruby Lee Harwood, and Fanny Rose Tyson. A week later, PBCC met and gained the approval of the congregation to build the church. Lake Livingston became its backyard and our baptismal pool. We might even say that this too was part of God's plan. On October 26, 1975, a mere six months after acquisition of the land, the church was dedicated. Joe Wall was a speaker for the dedication service. We are giving you a chronological history of the church, but we would be remiss if we did not point out that many months of prayer, even years for some, for a Bible church had preceded these happenings. Some might say it just so happened that nine families affiliated with Spring Branch Community Church came to this community at one time. They were the Elmer Hartfields, Ray, Jim, and Frank Ivesons, the Lloyd Thomases, the Mac McMurrays, and the Floyd Irons, the Bob Rossies, and the Tom Tysons, but we know differently. God had a plan. Some might say it just so happened that there were several other families who had the same petition before the Lord for a place of worship in this community. Some of them were the Bob Haggermans, Ed Kings, Bill Lovings, and Alan Nisbets. But we know God says, call upon me, and I will answer thee and show you great and marvelous things. Some might say it just so happened that Spring Branch Community Churchers, Harold Carlson, the architect, would draw a plan for the building. Earl Froner would measure and supervise the building and putting into place those huge timbers that really hold up the top of the building in place. Joanne McClay of the old Joe Lynn's Custom Draperies would have the draperies made and uh, put into place. In addition, E.C. Buddy Byer donated a large portion of the lumber. His family had several lumber mills in the Houston area. But we would say God used the members of this body of Christ to accomplish his plans. Some might say it just so happened that within the fellowship of the church were professional builders Lloyd Thomas, Ray Jim and Frank Iveson. Uh, see, Grandpa Iveson built the fireplace, electricians Bob Hagerman, Bob Adams, and Mac McMurray. All the electricians were working on a landscape for Floyd Ireland. Then there were the very versatile others who would use hammers, nails, saws, and carry that lumber. They were there every Saturday for work day. All labor was donated except the specialized group hired both the roof timbers and the auditorium. I wouldn't want that job. <laughs> Most, if not all, the furnishing were gifts of members and friends as well had some of the materials and all the landscaping. The total cost of the church was $52,000. The balance owing at the dedication was $25,000. Some might say it just so happened that when the excavating was done, it was discovered that one level that the one level structure originally planned could have a large lower level as well at an additional eight thousand dollars. We would say we know that cheap the cheap architect has a different plan. But on with the history. In 1978, fish fries have always been a favorite fellowship time, and the most memorable one was our third anniversary celebration in 1978 when the mortgage was burned and all indebtedness was paid. 1979, the first missionary committee was appointed in support for six missionaries began. Also in 1979, the church hosted the Martha Wood Memorial Tea, which was organized by Mrs. Iva Blaylock, and in 1980, three new missionaries were added to support. In 1982, dedications in the Ireland family occurred as well as a wedding in the Adams family. In 1983, the cemetery fence was completed. I might add that uh, Mr. Snyder here has helped a whole lot on that cemetery fence and everything else. He can help us repair it for a while back. I'm sure glad you're here today. <clears throat> In 1984, the PBCC library was started by Gertrude Schwartz in memory of her father, Edward, Edwin Arnold. The Lord sent Brother Coy and Ruth Lively into our fellowship, with Brother Coy being called as associate pastor. Brother Coy started teaching this the Wednesday night Bible study in the adult Sunday school. In 1985, 
ushered in Sunday night worship services conducted by Brother Coy Lively. Prayer was answered with a song leader, Al Moody and Jerry McBee. Jerry led the singing and organized the choir. Mom Edison played the organ and Betty Coker was a pianist. October 20th, 1985, a children's <coughs> church ministry was started with Amber White as a first attendee. Our history continues from 1985 to 1990 as we have great fellowships such as fish fries, potlucks, as well as white elephant Christmas parties. As more children begin coming, a new couple started coming, Otis and Doris Peck. Otis, every Sunday morning, did a children's sermon. In 1989, Brother Eddie lit, felt the Lord calling him to dedicate his time and energies to developing the Bible college that he had started at UMSI. In April 1989, he resigned the pastorate, <clears throat> and Brother Coy Lively accepted full-time pastorate. However, his health deteriorated, and he resigned at the end of 1989. A committee of elders searching for a pastor brought Brother Bob Cave to us. 1990 to 1999. On March 11, 1990, Brother Bob Cave was unanimously, unanimously voted as a pastor of PBCC. Our first vacation Bible school was held in 1992 under the direction of Dick Walker. Hands were very busy during the 1993 to 95 years with church facilities. The kitchen was re renovated with a bathroom and a bathroom was added downstairs. Folding doors were installed to create Sunday school rooms. Pews were placed in the alcoves to improve the seating. Additional parking spaces were, were prepared. Also, a banquet for the widow and widowers was initiated. The Sunshine Committee was formed with Charlotte Winters McLean as the first chairman. The church felt the need to help our neighbors in need, especially during the holidays. The Manor Committee was formed in the direction of D. Iverson, and baskets were delivered at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Brother Bob Cave resigned as a pastor, resigned the pastor in June, June 1st, 1999. Emily Hagerman died during this time, and her family gave as a memorial the church's first stained glass window. 2000 to 2005, the year 2000 found us without a pastor. Brother Jack Bailey was leading the congregation as an interim pastor. His motto was, "Have Bible, will sing or preach. <laughs> June 2000, he accepted the pastorship PBCC. In May of 2002, a wonderful asset to our church occurred when Louise Barclay donated in part, in memory of, of her mother, the money to install an elevator. Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Shortly after joining the church, Loretta Bailey was diagnosed with cancer. She put up a courageous battle and went to meet the Lord in June 2002. In June 2003, Angelia Hildebrand and Mark Tower granddaughter of Pat and Clyde Chandler were married by Brother Jack, Brother Coy Lively, by Brother Jack. Brother Coy Lively had married her mom and stepdad, Mike and Cheryl Smith, 24 years earlier. In July 2004, we find ourselves once again with a wonderful lady beside Brother Jack when he married Lois Corley. What a blessing for, all, for us all. New carpet was installed in the sanctuary and replacement of the floor covering downstairs this year of 2005. Our 30th homecoming was held October the 23rd with 129 people present. Otis Petty pres presented his m, m Memories and Mission. Barbecue was enjoyed by all. 2006-2010, three new missionaries were added to our list of support. The O'Briens, Chauvier, and Forest Glen Church Camp. The church's second stained glass window was installed as memorial to Bob Hagerman. In September of 2007, Brother Jack was diagnosed with lung cancer and had surgery. The church was lucky to have Brother Jim Lackey as guest speaker in his absence. After much prayer, Brother Jack returned to the pulpit in March 2008. During the next few years, the church went through some needed beautification. Beautiful new front doors were installed. New tables and chairs were purchased for downstairs. Finally, after many years, the church bell was resurrected and installed in the tower near the front walkway. The bell tolls each Sunday morning. In July of 2009, we celebrated Brother Jack's 10th anniversary with the church. Praise the Lord. An addendum to the original lease agreement of this property was signed, extending our term to 2075. May God continue to bless the ministry and outreach of this church. Early in the beginning of 2010, a special flag raising ceremony and celebration was held to mark the installation of a flagpole at the entrance of the church. The flagpole was donated as part of the beautification of the Robson Family Cemetery and church grounds. 
Many invited guests attended. To the glory of God, our church attendance is rapidly growing with an average attendance of 110. A third adult Sunday, Sunday school class was started. July of this year, Brother Jack announced his cancer had returned and would need radiation and chemo treatments. The elder board searched for an interim pastor. The board settled on Der Dario Ruperick, our much loved friend, living in the North <coughs> area as our guest pastor. 2011 2015, many more of our beloved congregation have gone to be with our Lord. Betty Roberts and friends donated a beautiful digital baby grand piano in memory of Betty Blakely. <laughs> Paul Terrell resigned after 17 years as our choir director. <coughs> Lynn Topp and Trot resigned as treasurer for more than 17 years. Thank you, Paul and Lynn. Renovation of the Robertson Cemetery continued with many new shrubs and plants, thanks to the hard work of the Singletons. Bess Blythe, one of the heirs of the church property, passed in November and is laid to rest in the cemetery. Bess's garden is an added treat. In 2012, Faye Wallace is appointed as music director. A new Sunday school room is built with the help of many volunteers. What a blessing to the glory of God. Brother Jack announced the third time his cancer had returned and takes a two-month leave of absence. On March 18th, he officially resigned due to health problems related to Lois and himself. Brother Jack goes to be the Lord on July the 1st. <clears throat> See, Faye Wallace resigned as music director to begin missionary work in Western Road State's position on August 1st. Brother Don Davis accepts the position as pastor in September. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. New pew seats and back cushions are installed thanks to the generous donor, and new pew Bibles are donated by the Franklins. In 2013, a long range planning committee received approval from the congregation to hire an architect to draw up plans for construction of a new fellowship hall. Drawings were provided and fundraising started. Currently, as of October 25th, 2015, we have raised one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars. Two thousand fourteen to two thousand fifteen. A children's class was added when Carol Hill graciously graciously volunteered to teach the children during the worship and adult Sunday school period. What a huge blessing. Mm -hmm. Now what we need are more children. Mm -hmm. Many things have happened these forty years and so much has been recorded due to the great Photos by Ellen Moss and the digital DVDs by Wayne Clinton. As a church family, we have rejoiced with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We have seen God answer prayer and our faith has been strengthened. We have seen many of our friends called home to be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are a praying church and we continue to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Both collectively and individually, we can say truly, Lord. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. Amen. I, was, uh, I was handed this this morning. I had a chance to read it a whole lot. This is from Rachel Richards. She couldn't be here this morning, but she wanted me to, this one just to be read. And I said, I'll put it here. Rachel Richards was Brother Jack's daughter. Sweet brothers and sisters of PBCC, I'm sad not to be with you this morning as you celebrate the Lord's blessings of 40 years serving you. The hugs and smiles will be greatly missed, but the food, I know it'll be good. <laughs> Y'all know that was always Daddy's favorite part. Adam and I covered your prayers and we are approaching, as we are approaching his spinal surgery. I want you all to know that if uh, Daddy ever told y'all how special you were. <clears throat> Time and time again, I heard him share with family and friends across the miles what a true joy it was for him to be pastor of TBCC. He called you all cream of the crop. 